Good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Absolute Zero News. My name is William Philman, and let's get right into our first story. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy lifted off on February 6th of this year after being delayed a total of five years. The launch was a total success, launching SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk's very own Tesla vehicle into space. Being the absolute king of nerds, the car that was launched into deep space was playing David Bowie's Life on Mars as it drifted away with a don't panic message on the dash, a reference to a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Can't get geekier than that. While we're talking about space, could Canada be losing the race for space? Obviously, space has been reached many times before, and calling its exploration a race is much more complex. But could Canada be pushing its exploration to the side? Since 2015, the federal government has allowed Canada's two largest space companies, Comdev and MBA, to be US-owned companies, and has allowed Norsat to be sold to a Chinese company without even a national security review. Fortunately, Canada's foreign affairs minister has the power to exempt <clears throat> any person or remote space sensing system from the application of the Remote Sensing Space Systems Act, provided no harm to national security would result. In any case, if we don't make a move now, there might not be any going back for the space industry here in Canada. That's all for me. Now over to Lucas for this Dance of Matter. Thanks, William. Contrary to popular belief, there are actually five states of matter. Now, if I were to ask you, what are the fundamental states of matter, you would probably answer solid, liquid, and gas, right? Well, there is more than that. See, the way you pass from one state to another is by adding or taking away energy. So from solid to liquid, you're adding energy, and vice versa. So if we attribute this energy as heat, it goes as such. Solid to liquid, and liquid to gas, you're adding heat. So what if we try going even further? What if we try heating a gas to extreme temperatures? Well, you would get plasma. Think of plasma as an ionized gas. A gas that is so concentrated in energy, it really isn't a gas anymore. For example, lightning storms and the interior of the sun are both forms of plasma, yet they belong to different subcategories. Things like neon signs and lightning storms belong to a category called partially ionized plasma. This type of plasma contains considerably less energy than its fully ionized counterpart. The interior of the sun, or any star really, are great examples of fully ionized plasma. Now the way I portray this plasma might lead you to believe that it's actually quite rare, but don't be fooled, it could actually be the most abundant state of matter in the universe. Not only that, but it could be the holy grail of clean energy. By the process of nuclear fusion, which, by the way, is complicated enough to earn its own episode, plasma can be an endless source of energy. In the right conditions, of course. The right conditions being 100 million degrees Kelvin. Which, you've guessed it, can be hard to maintain here on Earth. But even so, the United Kingdom-based company Tokamak Energy has started the construction of a plasma reactor called ST40. This bad boy will use high-powered magnets to control plasma at extreme temperatures. And the best part is, the only waste that's produced is helium. But that's only the gist of it. If you want to know more, go on the link in the description. It's pretty cool stuff. So now that we've seen plasma, that makes four states of matter. But didn't I say five earlier? Yes. Yes, I did. We've seen what happens when you superheat a gas. Now what if you super freeze a gas? You get a Bose-Einstein condensate. Sounds lame, right? It first got its name because it was discovered by Bose and Albert Einstein himself. It was then proved in 1995 when Carl Wieman and Eric Cornell froze a sample of rubidium. And we're not talking fridge temperatures or even winter in Canada. I'm talking absolute zero. Minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, or zero Kelvin. So the closer an element gets to absolute zero, the weirder the element reacts. This is due to the fact that their molecular motion is coming close to null. This causes that sample of rubidium, containing many atoms, to become one super atom. The way this works is based around the principle of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the amount of energy an object possesses due to its movement. So, the less an object moves, the more its energy becomes close to, if not zero. It's at this point when all the atoms are at the same temperature that they all clump together. They even start acting as one entity. Now these BCs, as I will refer to them, have a few uses. Its main one being the simulation of conditions that might apply in a black hole. Things like bending and slowing down light. Black holes are basically extremely dense mass, and well, so is a BEC. That's why right now that's the best shot we've got at replicating black holes here on Earth. Not that we would want to do that though, that would be a pretty bad idea. Thing is, as with plasma, 
It isn't really attainable on this small space rock we affectionately call Earth. The only way to reach such temperatures is by taking away energy from the samples using lasers. The other complicated thing with this state of matter is that not every element reacts to it the same, forming superfluids with strange properties or even dense gases. So from BCs to plasma, those are the states of matter. Alors pour le premier épisode, j'ai demandé aux gens de mon entourage quel était leur plus grand questionnement par rapport aux sciences. Voyons ce que j'en ai demandé. Est-ce que les aimants fonctionnent dans l'espace? Eh bien, la réponse simple serait oui, mais je vois facilement devenir cette question. En fait, on peut croire que le champ magnétique naturel qui entoure la Terre est à l'origine de cette force d'attraction et que sans celle-ci, cette force disparaîtrait complètement. Mais en fait, chaque aimant émet son propre champ magnétique. Ça veut dire que si on avait deux aimants au milieu de l'espace, assez loin de toute planète ou étoile, pour que ceux-ci agissent en rien sur ces deux aimants-là, ils s'attireraient quand même. Next! Que veut dire E égale MC au carré? Ah, oh, ça c'est une de mes questions préférées, et aussi une des plus célèbres. Pour comprendre celle-là, il faut rentrer dans la tête de Albert Einstein en 1905. Tout le monde connaît Albert Einstein, right? Oui! Good! Cette équation vient de sa théorie de la relativité. Cette théorie suggère que la masse et l'énergie sont la même entité physique, interchangeable si on veut. Dans l'équation elle-même, E signifie l'énergie au repos, M la masse et C la vitesse de la lumière, soit près de 300 millions de mètres par seconde. Donc si on joue avec l'équation un peu, en augmentant l'énergie totale et en considérant que C est une constante, on peut voir que la masse totale augmente. En bout de ligne, ça sert à représenter la relation entre la masse et l'énergie. Passons à la prochaine! Voyage temporel. C'est juste ça la question? OK, ben non, ou du moins le consensus général, c'est non. Le problème avec le voyage temporel, c'est qu'on n'est pas exactement sûr de c'est quoi le temps. Tout le monde sait c'est quoi le temps, c'est la mesure qui régit notre société, mais nous basons celle-ci sur le cycle du soleil ou d'autres phénomènes. En tant que tel, c'est dur de mettre un doigt sur ce que le temps est vraiment. Ce que l'on sait, c'est que le temps, à certaines vitesses, se déforme et se dilate, mais gardons ça pour une autre fois. Une dernière question! Oh, en anglais cette fois. Why is your show called Absolute Zero? Well, in the beginning, I just thought it sounded cool. Yeah, but then I discovered something interesting about helium. See, when you get helium to temperatures like Absolute Zero, it starts acting pretty weirdly. We all know that helium can make your voice high, but it can do something much, much cooler. See, when you get helium to temperatures like minus 273 degrees Celsius, it starts acting like a strange fluid flowing with no friction and even going against gravity. Now that is the power of absolute zero.